Good morning. We saw those extreme temperatures earlier this year. Since then, I've been using this tool you see behind me to track which days pose the highest heat risk in Washington and Oregon, and I'll show you what I mean. Take a look. This map was almost completely yellow just two days ago, which means the highest temperatures that day didn't get hot enough to pose a real threat to our health. But now check out today's map. The colors quickly switch to oranges and red this afternoon, then red and ultimately purple by the end of the week. The drastic change in colors shows the growing threat of heat-related illnesses each day. The thermometer continues to climb above 102 degrees with little to no relief at night. Our region will be most at risk, even compared to California, with this particular heat wave. And reminders about the heat have been coming in from all over the Tri-Cities this week. Here's a tweet from the Franklin PUD. Yeah, those temperatures over the weekend were beautiful, but the weather is changing and it's going to change fast. Franklin PUD is asking customers to, con to conserve energy any way they can. We all just use a little bit less. That puts less of a strain on our system. There's less of a demand that's coming in, and that keeps our system running and being able to provide enough electricity for everyone. And as we saw at the end of June with those record temperatures, there was the need for rolling blackouts. So we'll continue to monitor that situation for you. And so this brings us to the tips from Franklin PUD. They're providing tips for you. They say between the hours of 5 p.m. and 8 p.m., you should limit the use of your washer and dryer appliances, limit the use of your oven, bump that thermostat up just a few degrees, and close your blinds and curtains to keep the sunlight out of your home. Franklin PUD says these adjustments during the hottest times of the day helps not only your community, but your electricity bill as well. And so now we're going to the poll question of the day. We're asking you, are you prepared for another heat wave? You can vote now at yaktrynews.com slash vote and on our social media pages. And we'll have those results at the end of the show. And you might not be working in these extreme temperatures, but there are plenty of people that will be working outside. The Kennewick Fire Department and local fire agencies have been dealing with several fires over the past five days, and luckily the temps haven't been too dangerous. But as temperatures rise, Kennewick Fire Chief Chad Michael is asking you to think about the first responders who are out protecting our community. I think everybody probably knows that it does have an impact, but what might not be obvious is, unlike the short sleeves that I'm wearing right now, when we're wearing those heavy coats in those pants, we, our, our skin doesn't breathe. We sweat and that's all contained inside, so our core temperature raises quite a bit and it becomes very taxing on our firefighters. So it's important that we, we uh, do what we call rehab them, we rest them more frequently, and that really requires that we bring in more resources. Firefighters spent around four hours on Sunday battling a fire near North Garfield Street and Columbia Drive. Thanks to their automatic aid partners in Richland, Pasco, and Benton County, the firefighters can work in shifts and stay hydrated in times like these. But it's still not an easy task to be in the extreme heat and put in hours of hard work.